Hello and welcome to our English Easy Practice channel. In this video, we'll be sharing some fun and engaging conversations to help you improve your English skills. Listening to and repeating these conversations will help you build your vocabulary, improve your pronunciation, and boost your confidence when speaking English. And remember, repetition is key. So be sure to watch this video multiple times and practice saying the phrases out loud. Let's get started. I was thinking about something today. What's your favorite thing about yourself? That's an interesting question, Emily. Well, I'd say I like that I'm a hard worker. I always give my best in everything I do, whether it's at school or in my job. It makes me feel accomplished. That's a great quality, Mark. I've noticed how dedicated you are to your studies and your career. For me, I think my favorite thing is my sense of humor. I love making people laugh and finding joy in everyday moments. I've always enjoyed your sense of humor, Emily. You have a way of brightening up any room with your laughter. So, what makes you enjoy making people laugh? Well, making someone smile or laugh feels like spreading happiness. It's a way to connect with people and create positive memories. It makes me feel like I can make a difference in someone's day. That's wonderful, Emily. You have this unique ability to bring joy to those around you. And you know what? I think my hard work ethic complements your sense of humor. We balance each other out. Thanks, Mark. You're right. We do make a great team. What about you? Why do you like being a hard worker? I think it gives me a sense of purpose and helps me achieve my goals. It's satisfying to see the results of my efforts and know that I'm working towards something meaningful. It's like a journey of personal growth. You're definitely driven, Mark. That's what makes you so special. We both have unique qualities that bring out the best in each other and our friendships. Thanks, Emily. I'm glad we can appreciate and support each other's strengths. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to receive more like it in the future. I was thinking about something. What's your favorite thing about your family and friends? That's a great question, Sarah. I'd say my favorite thing about my family is how supportive they are. They're always there when I need them, whether it's for advice or just to chat. It's like having a safety net that makes me feel secure. That's nice, Mike. Support is so important. And what about your friends? Well, with my friends, I love the fun we have together. 
We laugh a lot, share our stories, and create amazing memories. It's like a big adventure with them. What's your favorite thing about your family and friends? For my family, it's the way we celebrate special occasions. We gather for birthdays and holidays, cook delicious food, and spend quality time. Those moments are precious. That sounds lovely, Sarah. And what about your friends? With my friends, it's the trust and understanding we share. We can talk about anything, and they always have my back. It's like having a second family. That's wonderful, Sarah. It's amazing how both family and friends can bring joy and support into our lives. Absolutely, Mike. We're lucky to have them, aren't we? Definitely, Sarah. They make life richer and more meaningful. Hello. Are you enjoying the story? Please give us a like. Thank you. Hey, Dave. How's it going? Hey, Sarah. Well, you know me, not much of a morning person. I always wake up on the wrong side of the bed. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed that about you. I'm the opposite. I love mornings. So full of energy. Lucky you. Mornings are just a struggle for me. I wish I could be more like you. Don't worry, Dave. We all have our own rhythms. I've been trying to become a morning person for a while now, but it's not easy. How can I help you enjoy mornings more? Maybe we can start by grabbing a cup of coffee together in the morning. That might give me the boost I need. That's a good idea. We can chat and sip our coffee. It might make your mornings a bit better. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe spending some time with a morning person like you will rub off on me. <laughs> I hope so. But if not, no pressure. We can enjoy our coffee and chat no matter what. Thanks, Sarah. You're a good friend. Anytime, Dave. Friends help each other out. I was wondering, what's your favorite thing about our hometown? Oh, that's an easy one, Alice. I love how friendly everyone is. People here are always ready to lend a hand and say hello. It's like one big family. That's true, Mike. I've noticed that, too. It's so comforting. For me, the best thing is the parks. We have so many beautiful parks where I can go for a peaceful walk or have a picnic with my friends. Yeah, our parks are awesome. I often take my dog to the park and we have a blast. Another thing I really like is the local food. 
The restaurants in our town serve the most delicious dishes. I can't get enough of it. I completely agree with you on that, Mike. I love the local food as well. The bakeries here make the yummiest pastries. But you know, I also cherish the historical buildings in our town. They tell stories from the past, and I find them fascinating. That's a great point, Alice. Our town's history is unique, and those old buildings make it special. It's wonderful to hear what you love about our hometown. It makes me appreciate it even more. Likewise, Mike. It's a lovely place, and talking about our favorite things just reminds me of how lucky we are to call it home. Hey, Mark, have you heard about the upcoming exams next week? Yeah, I did. I'm a bit nervous about them, to be honest. Don't worry, we've got this. Have you started studying yet? Not really. I've been procrastinating a bit. How about you? I've started reviewing my notes and making flashcards. It really helps. That's a good idea. Maybe I should start doing that too. What subjects are you most worried about? Well, math for sure. I always struggle with it. How about you? I'm not too confident about history. So many dates to remember. I hear you. Maybe we can help each other out. We could set up a study group. That's a great idea, Sarah. We can quiz each other and make studying more fun. Absolutely. And don't forget to get a good night's sleep before the exams. It makes a big difference. Thanks, Sarah. You're right. I'll try to manage my time better and get enough rest. You'll do great, Mark. Just stay positive and we'll get through this together. Thanks for the support, Sarah. Let's ace these exams. You know the drill. I'll provide a definition, and you need to guess the correct English phrase. Are you both ready for the challenge? Absolutely. You bet. That's the spirit. Let's kick off the excitement with your first definition. This phrase is used to encourage someone not to worry about a small mistake. Sarah, your answer, please. Oh, I know this one. No big deal. You're spot on, Sarah. No big deal is used to reassure someone that something isn't a major issue. Let's hear it in a sentence. If you accidentally spill some coffee, your friend might say, Don't worry, it's just a little spill. No big deal. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to receive more like it in the future. Mike, it's your turn for the next question. 
This phrase means to try to make a guess or estimate about something. Mike, what's your answer? Easy one. Take a guess. Absolutely right, Mike. Take a guess means to make an educated estimate. Here's an example sentence. If you're not sure how much time is left, you could say, "I'm not sure, but I'd say there's about ten minutes left." Just take a guess. Wonderful job, both of you. Time for the third question. This phrase means to support or help someone, especially in a difficult situation. Sarah, your response, please. Got it. Lend a hand. Correct, Sarah. Lend a hand means to offer assistance. Listen to this example. If your friend is moving to a new house, you might offer to help carry boxes to lend a hand. Mike, get ready for your next challenge. This phrase is used to say that something is completely finished or no longer possible. Mike, what's your guess? I know this one too. It's a done deal. You got it, Mike. It's a done deal means something is finalized. Let's see it in a sentence. If negotiations are successful, you could say, "We agreed on the terms. It's a done deal." Sarah, get ready for your next challenge. This phrase is used to say you don't understand something at all. Sarah, your answer, please. Easy peasy. I'm completely in the dark. That's right, Sarah. I'm completely in the dark means you have no understanding of something. Listen to this example. If your friend is talking about a new TV show you've never heard of, you might say, "Sorry, I'm completely in the dark about that show." We're nearly to the finish line, contestants. Here's your final question for this episode. This phrase is used to express excitement and anticipation about a future event. Mike, your answer. I got this one. Can't wait. Exactly, Mike. Can't wait is used when you're eagerly looking forward to something. Let's see that in a sentence. If you're excited about a concert, you might say, "I'm so thrilled! I can't wait to see my favorite band perform." That wraps up another exciting episode of English Expressions Extravaganza. 
Let's give a big round of applause to Sarah and Mike for their language prowess and enthusiasm. <laughs> to our amazing viewers, thank you for joining us on this language learning adventure. Remember, learning new phrases can be as easy as taking a guess. Until next time, stay curious and keep learning! That is the end of this video. Now choose one of these English phrasal verbs and use it in a sentence. And share your sentence with us in the comments section below. Remember, watching this video a couple of times more, you'll improve your English skills quickly. See you on our other videos. Have a great day. Listen to the lessons repeatedly to think in English and automatic speaking. Repetition is very, very important to become fluent. You need to speak English fluently without translating in your head. The words should come out of your mouth automatically. So, this is where the repetition comes in. If you repeat the same vocabulary and sentences many times, you will become a master of this vocabulary and grammar. So, you will be able to use that words automatically, without thinking about grammar rules and without translating vocabulary in your head. In order to think in English, you must repeat vocabulary and sentences as much as you can. After lots of repetition, Eventually, you will start to think English in your head and improve your speaking skills. As I mentioned before, we use the question and answer method repeatedly in our short story lessons. So, you will listen to the vocabulary and sentences many times in the same lesson. 